a great welcome to this presentation today we will discuss another important topic relevant to both structural as well as geotechnical engineers the topic title is analysis of axially loaded piles using e tabs based on load transfer curves as usual let us first deep dive into the problem statement as is clear from the title the objective is to demonstrate the analysis of axially loaded single piles using ETABS, which is essentially a structural engineering software based on load transfer curves. It's very important to note that while the above analysis would provide the much required pile load settlement curves, they also provide us sufficient insight into the rate at which the skin and end bearing resistances mobilizes with the pile head displacement. So let us discuss about the pile and soil parameters. Those are considered in this analysis. So the pile sketches is shown here. As you can see that the pile is driven through a clay strata and the pile tip rests on a medium sand strata. And the diameter of the pile is 450 mm. The pile length L is 15 meters. So this is the total length L15 meters and the undrained shear strength of the top clay strata CU is equal to 30 kPa. The bearing strata, that's the bottom one, it's basically is a medium dense sand and the water table level is observed at the ground surface. Accordingly, we'll consider the submerged unit weight of 8 kN per meter cubed in our analysis. So fine. So before getting into the analysis, I would like to give you a brief description on the load transfer curves because we are using them in our analysis. From our, our basics, we know that for axially loaded piles, the load applied at the pile head, it is resisted by a combination of two components. The first one is the skin friction, which is developed along the pile length at a pile soil interface. And the second one is the bearing resistance, which is mobilized at the pile tip. And it's important to note that the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil at the pile tip, that is through the bearing resistance and the ultimate friction along the pile shaft, they do not occur simultaneously and corresponds to different displacement levels. Now the load transfer mechanism can be, can be better represented through load transfer curves, namely TZ and QZ curves. Now let us discuss what are these two curves. While the TZ curve describes the mobilization of a skin friction along the pile shaft at a different displacement levels, the QZ curve provides the end bearing resistance for different displacement levels at the pile tip. In general, thus we can conclude that these two load transfer curves provide us how the various resistances, whether it is the skin friction or the bearing resistance, is mobilized for various displacement levels at the pile head. So, it is important to note that both the curves introduce the nonlinear behavior of the soil into the analysis of axially loaded piles. So, for a better interpretation, the mathematical model for an axially loaded pile is shown over here on the right side. And as you can see that this is our pile and if you want, you can also represent the compressibility of uh, the pile into account through the A, A into E by L term. And here you will find that there are basically two curves or two elements. One is the soil skin friction element that will include the so-called TZ curves and then there is another component that is a soil end bearing which is represented through the q curves. Okay, fine. So the analysis of axially loaded piles through e tabs should cover the following essential topics. That is step one. It would be the computation of ultimate skin friction and end bearing capacity of pile. Please remember that there are many methods available in the literature for the computation of the ultimate skin friction and bearing capacity 
and you can select the best one for your project. So for the given pile in the problem, the ultimate skin friction is mobilized through the clay strata and this is computed at various depths using the alpha method. If you go into the literature or any good textbooks, you will find that there are many other methods like, like for example the beta method, the gamma method etc. So you can choose the best one suited to your project. So for the given problem, the ultimate end bearing capacity through the bearing in sand strata is obtained through the bearing capacity factor NQ. So the computer values for the problem pile is shown in the figure. As you can clearly see, the skin friction is mobilized along the pile shaft at the pile solid interface and at near the pile tip you will find that the skin friction is 41.7 kilo per meter and this gradually reduces towards the depth because you know that the effective overburden pressure is smaller at the surface and at the surface we have calculated the skin friction of the order of 12.8 kilo per meter and then the end bearing resistance that is computed is a 2400 kPa because it is a bearing against the medium sand. Now let us proceed on to the step number two. In step number two, with available values of ultimate skin friction and the bearing resistance, we will get into the job of compiling the TZ as well as the QZ curves. So if you look into the literature, you will find that there are as good as a 10 to 20 models available for the compilation of a TZ as well as the QZ curves. Of this, for the present study, we have selected the recommendations provided in API 2011. So the curves are presented below. And please remember here the TZ curves are provided only at selected depths. So look here, these are the TZ curves. So how do you interpret T set curves? T is basically it is a skin friction and which is presented along the, as the ordinate here skin friction in kilonewton per meter length of the pile and here along the x-axis you will find that the displacement remember this displacement is not the pile head displacement but this is the displacement that is mobilized at the soil pile interface for example of the 14 curves I have compiled, I have presented only 3 for convenience. For example, if you see the blue one is corresponding to the teaser curve that is prepared at a depth of 4.5 meter. And here we find that the maximum skin friction that is developed is of the order of around say 22 kN per meter. And the associated displacement is uh, only 4.5 mm. So in a similar way, you will find that the Teaser curve for the 14.5 meter depth is shown over here and represented in green color. And here, as you can see, that the skin friction maximum developed is at this depth is 42 kN per meter. And this again corresponds to a displacement level of around, say, 4.5 mm. In a similar way, we have also compiled the end bearing resistance. Obviously, here we'll have only one curve because we are developing the q curve at the pile tip only and as usual you can see that the along the x-axis we have got the displacement remember this displacement is the displacement of the soil at the pile tip and along the y-axis we have the associated pile resistance and as you can see that both the t set as well as the q curves are non-linear but the most important thing for this problem to note is and from the t set curves we find that the peak skin friction is mobilized at a small displacement levels of around say 4.5 mm whereas the end bearing resistance it is mobilized at very large displacements of the order of you can see that 40 to 50 millimeters thus we find that the basic assumption used in the static formula that is both the ultimate capacities develop simultaneously it is grossly wrong now with the QZ and the teaser curves in, in our hand, we are ready to proceed for the ETAPS analysis. That is step 3. So here as you can see that here is the ETAPS model that is used for the analysis. So basically it essentially consists of uh, three components. First one is the pile which is modeled as a column element using linearly elastic material. 
and we have used the link elements which are essentially the multilinear elastic link elements in order to model the teaser curves and here as you can see that the link elements are modeled at a very 1 meter level and then the third one is the link element that is representing the QZ which is provided at the pile tip. So you will find that the ETAPS model is very simple and you will take hardly say 10 to 15 minutes for the modeling and the ETAP analysis will provide us the pile settlement curve, the skin friction and end bearing resistance displacement plots. So let me finally take you to the pile load settlement curve that is obtained from the ETAPS analysis. As usual, you will find that it is a plot wherein along the x-axis we have got the pile head displacement which is in mm and the total load mobilized at various pile head displacement levels in kilonewton. And as you can see that this plot is shown three curves, the curve in the red color that shows the development or the rate at which the bearing resistance mobilized with the pile head displacement. Whereas you have another curve that is shown in blue that provides the mobilization of the skin friction corresponding to different levels of the pile head displacement. And finally, when we sum up these two curves, we obtain the plot for the total load which is shown in the black, black color. Again, from our characteristic TZ and QZ curves, the same observations are available for the pile load settlement curve also. We find here that while the maximum skin friction is mobilized at around say 5 millimeters, it takes a larger displacement level of the order of say 40 to 50 mm for the mobilization of the full bearing resistance. So for example, from this curve we obtain that the ultimate load capacity of this axially loaded pile is of the order of say, let me say that approximately 720 kN. So if, if we apply a factor of uh, say approximately say 3, so we will obtain an allowable load of say 240 kN. So 240 kN means this comes to somewhere over here. So what we find that at this working level, while majority of the skin friction is mobilized, only a small amount of the bearing resistance is mobilized at the working load level. So that is an important thing. And before concluding, I would like to tell you that obtaining a pile load settlement curve, the best way is to conduct a pile load test. Now whether you will go for a pile load test, it again depends upon the importance of the project. So for important projects, obviously we need to obtain these curves, that's a pile load settlement curves from the actual pile load test conducted at the site. And obviously you will be able to use these models in order to verify such pile load settlement curves obtained from the test. Again, these analyses are also relevant for small scale projects where due to some reason or other, you may not conduct a pilot test. And you can use this analysis procedure in order to obtain a reliable pilot settlement curve, obviously, which will not re represent or which it will not replace the actual pilot test. So I think that is all for this presentation. So kindly please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any comment, please write to me. I will try to provide reply to all the comments within one or two days. And if you have some healthy constructive suggestions for improvement of this presentation, that also please let me know. So that's all. Thanks a lot for listening and have a nice day.